All right, <clears throat> welcome to another uh, little stick cam video, and this time I'm uh, going to play on a more entry level beginner racer. And one thing that's going to happen as a result of that is that everything will happen a lot more slowly. Another thing you may see is that I'm going to try out these uh, tape pluses and lines that I have on my controllers so that you can see which directions my controllers should be expected to deflect and then maybe you can see a little bit better when I deflect them because the sticks are black and the lighting isn't very good. And as usual my explanation is that I am not trying to race the course, I am just trying to demonstrate some safe and standard navigation. I'm not a very good pilot, so I need to take it easy anyway. I'm also hoping that you will be able to perceive that I'm playing with inertial thrust physics. And so as you can see in the center of the screen, there is the word float. And if you can't see it, there's the numbers that are changing that are showing my speed. And I'll turn the float on and off really quick. And you can see that float is on. And what float does is it turns off all inertial stabilization. And so that way the gameplay is only my thrust. And then after that there's inertia. So this might simulate a uh, space drone that's flying around. So my hope with this uh, demonstration videos is that I can gain some attention to the idea of a four joystick controller in such a way that people will see how it works and think that perhaps first of all they might like to try one and second of all that they might think it's easy enough that they could expect to have success even on their first try. And so then along those lines I'm going to once again discuss the specific controls for this craft and how they all work. So now that we're inside of this little environment here, I've slowed all the way down and I'm going to throttle up a little bit and then throttle down a little bit and I'm not going any direction other than the up and down. Then I'm going to throttle to the right a little bit. Then I'm going to throttle to the left a little bit. Okay, and I'm not sure if you can see that now that I've... Let me turn around so that you can see what's going on over here. I'll get back inside here. You can see these lights and stuff. Then I'm going to get stopped here. Then I'm going to look up. Here's a good place that you can see that I'm, I'm looking to the left and to the right. I'm looking down. Okay, now I'm going to roll. You can see that I'm rolling here. And now I'm going to get pointed in the right direction. I'm going to throttle forward. And I'm going to slow down. So here I'm going to throttle forward, but I'm changing my angle of course so that my forward throttle cancels my inertia. Oops. As well as gives me my new direction inertia. So I need to slow down. So I could slow down with my forward thrusters, but they're not very effective because they're just not as powerful as the main engine on the back. So if I get going in a direction, I need to turn around and then stop like that. So here I'll just get going and I'll just and maybe my goal here is that you can perceive a little bit that I need to turn not towards my target but first I need to slow down 
and then I need to accelerate in my new direction. So I'm never pointing exactly where I'm going in order to do that. So first I'm kind of pointing a lot more where I'm coming from, and then I gradually shift to pointing towards where I'm going to go. So I'm already going there, but I'm going to slow down here anyways. It's a little bit choppy. Okay, so here you can see I'm pointing between where I'm coming from and where I need to go. So here again, I'm going to point where I'm coming from and then where I need to go. Here's the move right here. You got to get into the tunnel and then you got to get going in the direction. So on my other demonstration, I was using a higher performance vehicle. There are three categories of performance in this game. There's amateur and professional and expert. And the, the vehicles get more maneuverable, more powerful, and faster at each level. So this one is nice and gradual since it's the beginner level vehicle. So one thing that I want to talk about with this game controller a lot, I want to talk about this a lot, is that I think that a lot of people are going to feel that this game style where you have to have the simulation of realistic physics will not be popular because it is not inherently a very easy game to play, but also it doesn't provide the same experience as arcade games do because arcade games are designed to work a few simple controls and then the game may have a theme but the theme isn't as important as you are having this regimen of control patterns that you're going to work out. And simulation games have a tendency to not have that element where they particularly challenge the controls so for example, driving a race car is a lot of barely using the controls and a lot of finessing the controls and you have to spend more of your effort judging your speed and braking at the right time, but it's not like Mortal Kombat or something where you hit eight buttons in a row a whole bunch of times and a whole bunch of times. But I will argue that with the six-axis inertial space game, you actually do challenge your coordination enough that a game like this would be a good arcade-style game. It's just that the problem now is, is that you don't have necessarily a lot of people in... Well, let me stop before I crash. The problem with this game is that there is not a common intuitive control interface. A Nintendo controls does not easily play this game. And that is a crucial uh, requirement to meet. And so my suggestion is, is that with a game controller such as this, if Nintendo had four joysticks, then this kind of game would actually make for an excellent arcade experience because even though it's a physics simulation to some degree, I mean not really, it's still a video game, but it is a simulation oriented game, it still has four controls, four joysticks, which is challenging enough that it would demand on the game player enough so that this right here could be a very arcadey experience without changing the physics or making it work with only a plus and two buttons or something like that. Just the way the simulation mode is naturally set up would make for a very arcade friendly experience. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to finish the race here, this is just a warm up, but I'm going to cut the video there because it's getting to be a very long video and I don't want to drag it on too long.